Now you're going to King Kiki, going to Ottawa. Yeah. Uh, see your church, your home, your family here. Yeah. It's a little bit closer. It's a little <laughs> but if I could count the miles, you've been with me there. Every which way. You're coming with, and thank you. And Oh, Lord. There's no different. You're blessing me before I even, even get to this point. I'm blessed to share with you all today. Um, and, to, and today is a good day uh, to be in the house of the Lord. I was, at a, I was at a wedding yesterday, helping with the wedding. Uh, but that was just the warm up. Uh, today is the day. Today is the day. Today is the meal we feast together. I want to pause before I get going uh, to say thank you uh, for your companionship along the way, uh, for the ways that you help in your community, as I hear very much about, as you go further and as you help the larger church. Uh, it's a blessing to serve the Lord with you together, even with the places I'm going. Uh, it's nice to know that uh, we are of one mind and spirit through the Lord and what he's doing, no matter where we are. And um, in places I've been, sometimes it's tricky. Sometimes I'm not sure if it'll be safe for my family to be there. Uh, but I know very well that they are safe here, that we are blessed all here together. Amen. So for that as well. Amen. And uh, the last few years have been uh, tricky, yeah. haven't they? Yeah. Uh, it's been tough. It's been switching to screens yeah. for all the time for a little while, <laughs> yeah. and then half and half. And, yeah. Yeah. and some yeah. churches are going away from that. But yeah. some people need to be at home and stay safe and feel comfortable, and maybe you're out of state. So uh, we're, we're happy to have you here, too. Amen. But you keep it going. You keep the momentum going. You keep blessing people in any way you can. And so thank you for the ways through all this time, through uh, through the hardship we've seen in the last two years, but also through uh, what our first family has seen in their lives together in the last two Amen. years. Amen. Thank you for the ways you keep loving them, that they can best give with you what they have. Thank you for taking care of them in the ways that they deserve and, and that you work together as a larger family as God has surely Put us all together to be. Yeah. Our word from the Lord today is from 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 11 and 12. If you'd like to stand, go ahead. If you'd like to remain seated, feel free to sit with the Lord too. But Paul said to Timothy, you, man of God, flee from all this and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called when you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. This is the word of the Lord. Praise be to God. Amen. Amen. As we look out into the world, as we look out into our culture, there are many mighty men that do walk among us, aren't there? Amen. People that the, our world sees certainly as mighty men. We might think quickly in the larger world that we think of athletes, perhaps. I think of big linebackers getting together, and, and they can move probably a lot of cars, just a couple of them. <laughs> You might think also of titans of industry and business, doing great things, some of the things we've heard today. Doing big things uh, to care for their families and to care for their communities. We also think of politicians who are doing the best they can to stay in the middle, perhaps, or try to advocate for people whose voices have not been heard for a long time. But we can get into the imaginary, too, can't we? Our family loves the Marvel Universe. Uh, we've got superheroes. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I can't tell you how many sermons I've been working on or papers for school or something for work where a theme song from a superhero movie is in the background. Music is good. <laughs> yes, sir. When we think of Superman, and it seems like a little bit of a stretch for us, supernatural experience for him, far beyond our experience. We need someone more than just someone that's far away working in a building. We need someone more than that's zooming around the world like a superhero Superman. We need someone on the ground with us. We need someone walking with us, showing us how Amen. to do yeah. this life that Amen. God calls us to be about. Amen. Yeah. 
In the church, we also think of mighty people, perhaps those that have come before us. Church, uh, church has been built on the shoulder of mighty people, mighty men of faith. We can look further back, though, to the Bible, how God called Abraham and Sarah to be his people, to take steps of faith into a place they did not know, yes. Yes. and to trust God where they went. Yes. We think also of the prophets who said hard words <coughs> at difficult times. Because God said so. God called them to do so. And then we think of the uh, crowning example, Jesus himself. All of scripture summarized in the flesh. All of God's intentions and purposes for us seen <coughs> in real time, in real life, for people that were there. He taught us how to love. He showed us what it means to be fully human, fully man. Yeah but also fully connected to the loving God of the universe. Amen. Indeed, our goal in life as a man, as a woman, as anyone, is to be more and more like Jesus. Amen. Because yes. it's his ways yes. that lead to peace and Amen. health and hope. Yes. Amen. He's the one who gets us going every day and helps us keep going until we rest our head. Because we struggle sometimes, don't we? Yes. We need yes. more examples of hope more and more as we get through tough times. Mm -hmm. I recognize in my life that I've gotten to where I am because of mighty people around me, mighty women sometimes too. And as we uh, consider the words of Dorothy Sayers that have been modified by other people, including Jim Carrey, near every mighty man is a mighty woman or a whole family Amen. rolling Amen. their eyes. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't we not stand on our own, we need others to help us stand, to help us stand <laughs> upward. Help us keep going. Indeed, as Paul wrote to Timothy, Paul was well aware that Timothy's upbringing was among mighty women. Paul mentions Lois, his grandmother, and Eunice, his mother, uh -huh. yes. who showed the fullness of God's love to him. But Paul noticed that he needed to carry Timothy further, that God had a bigger calling for Timothy than where he started. And so he kept him going. In my own upbringing, I remember my father was soft-spoken, which isn't necessarily seen as a mighty man usually in this world. But his love for me was clear. He showed up. He was there. Thank you, fathers, for showing up, for Amen. being there. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. But along with my father, who stands tall, 6'9", uh, <laughs> I, had, I had strong women around me. I had my mother who took care of our family as my dad had struggles of health. I had my great grandmother who well into her 90s was more than willing to shovel snow to mow her lawn. Ooh. Perhaps only after begging her would she let us help her. They went with me to church. My dad was in the choir. My mother and my father and my grandmother and my family were there with me and we became mightier by the day because of the good work of God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Now, there are differences between men and women, and so the balance is helpful. But as we look to Scripture, as we look to our life together, the differences are healthy, oftentimes, but they are never meant to cause division. We are meant to stay together as men and women working together for the Lord. Amen. That is my calling. Amen. I'm grateful to be with you today uh, because I know, as in my tradition, you affirm women in ministry when they feel that call. You encourage them to be deacons, to help out in other ways. It takes all of us to do what God has called us to do. It's too big for yes. just yes. one of us. Amen. Yes. Amen. That's right. Well, Lady Q, I, I heard your message on Women's Day, so I'll stick to my task for today. <laughs> <laughs> Again, we get a snapshot of Paul's ministry. He wasn't in prison at this time. He may have been writing in his own hand more clearly. His protege, his brother, his son of the faith, Timothy. We get a snapshot of this mentor mentee, brother and brother relationship going on that helped them both through many times and that Paul could give strength to Timothy through a letter. And indeed, these words were meant for Timothy. We understand he was a timid person, perhaps. I'm not sure if you're like me or not, but sometimes I feel more like I have the thoughts of Timothy that are timid. Rather than the yes, powerful yes. proclamation of Paul. Yes. Amen. But that's okay. We all have our time. We all have the moment that God calls us to speak, to be bold. 
So this was Timothy's time on his own, perhaps, in Ephesus, rebuilding the church, revitalizing it. And Paul gives him uh, good, good clarity that Paul knows what Timothy's been going through. There's been teachers trying to stir up trouble, people trying to cause dissension, people trying to hurt the people that have intentions for themselves. But Paul calls Timothy to be bold, to be strong, to trust God through all things. Yes, amen. amen. Yes, Lord. As Paul wrote to Timothy, he revealed three actions that shape mighty men and mighty people of God. Three movements that allow God to work in our lives and mold us more and more into the personhood of Jesus. Yeah. Let's take a look at the first one here today. The first thing Paul calls Timothy to is to flee from vices. In the verse, uh, first verse we had, verse 11, Paul simply says, flee from all of this. Now, flee from all this is lost to our context just for a second. It's like the therefore. We have to go back to see what it's there for. Right. <laughs> I'm borrowing that. <laughs> so what Paul had written previously to Timothy was to be careful of the people who look out for themselves, the people that chase money, the people that chase power, people that throw their weight around to make decisions for everyone. And Indeed, in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, and in our day, people, uh, especially uh, Judean Christians at that time, or Jews formerly, thought that pursuing God's ways in the world meant that you would instantly prosper. Now we have a better, clearer term in our days, what that's called, prosperity gospel. Oh, yeah. It's a counterfeit. It's only part of the whole picture of how God wants to redeem so all true. things. Amen. Amen. Come on. Surely as we walk with the Lord, he... Will sustain us. Yes, he will. Reach. But that doesn't mean the grass will always be green, does it? That's right. It Amen. doesn't mean we're always going to have the best drink or our food sitting on our table. That's right. That's right. But nonetheless, God calls us and chooses to bless us. But Timothy was fighting with this ideology, this false philosophy that you will prosper fully. You can take from anyone. It's no problem because you're God's person. You're God's man. And Paul reminds Timothy, this is not what we're about. This is not what the church of Jesus Christ is about. Paul encourages Timothy not to pursue money because he might be persuaded. Now we see money thrown around in our world, sometimes for good purposes, to help those who are in need, but sometimes it's used to get out of trouble. I think we can think of other people in our world currently, maybe on the main stage, that Thought to get away with certain things and just throw money at it and escape any results that would pour for them. But that's not the way we can live to be sustainable. That's not the way we can live to work and care for one another. That's right. And so Paul calls Timothy away from that. It's helpful sometimes to think of the things that we hold, the things that we see. So I thought of the quarter that's coming out, I heard. I think it's true. I looked at a few different places. A quarter where George Washington's head is turning from facing in God we trust to away from in God we trust. Oh, wow. Now, money's a good tool. Money can do some good things. But when we're fully focused on money, God is not our full focus. Indeed, right. if we are fully focused on money, we cannot fully declare in God we trust. All right. Amen. We think of Jesus and his ministry, how the religious leaders had had influence for a long time. They passed on traditions that were meant to be valuable for everyone, but they kept the good stuff to themselves. That's when we find Jesus more and more welcoming people to the table that had not been welcomed for a long time. And Jesus was going to the outcasts, the overlooked, the lowly, because those are the people that God loves to you. But the religious folk hadn't been attending to those people. They neglected their responsibilities. Mm -hmm. So they got angry at Jesus for doing the right thing that they ought not to have been, they ought to have been doing, but were not. Mm -hmm. They got mad at Jesus because he loved all people, was willing to go to anyone to help. Mm -hmm. It's something yeah. they weren't willing to do for themselves because they were caught up in their influence, caught up in power, mm -hmm. caught up in money and other things. Right. Right, Indeed, no matter where we serve in the church, we should be careful of the things that try to pull us away from love, yeah. especially loving each other. Amen. Amen. Again, with power and authority, we can throw our weight around to get our way. But when we give up this vice, we make space for people of other statures to have their voice heard too. Amen. 
Indeed, our voice is stronger in singing or in speaking and chanting and protesting when we speak together the same words with the same voice. That is indeed how we walk through the world, being a voice of hope for those who need to hear. Amen. Amen. So we give up our vices. We let go of the chains. They don't hold us down, drag us down. So we all can walk free, hand in hand, do what God has called us to do. But first, Paul calls Timothy to give up vices. But second, Paul doesn't leave him there. He says, pursue virtues. Give up vices, flee vices, pursue virtues. We find this again in verse 12. I'm sorry, the latter part of verse 11. Pursue righteousness, sometimes mentioned justice. Godliness, faith, love, endurance, gentleness. Indeed, God just doesn't just call us away from the traps of life. He calls us to the beautiful mountaintops that we ought to pursue. Yes, and we may not ever get to the mountain, for once we get to the top of this mountain, there might be another one. Right. But we can keep on going because as we go further and further, as God calls us, we are where we need to be, and we are with whom we need to be. Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, virtues are something different than pursuing outward things. Virtues are things we grow in ourselves. I love greenhouses. They're so cool how they work and how people take care of things in greenhouses through all seasons. That's what we're called to be. Greenhouses here together and at our homes and wherever we go. Let life thrive no matter where we are. Indeed, gardening is a thorough process of planting, of watering almost every day of pruning along the way, things that aren't caring for itself anymore, but then harvest too. But the blessing of the harvest sometimes is that we get to replant again. We get to let God work through us again because yes. we've gotten some good fruit. Yeah. We can all enjoy that together. But again, we think of cultural markers of mighty men, boldness, loudness, strength. Now these can be Witness, uh, this can be part of who a man of God is, but it's not all these things. Again, we shouldn't be shouting at people as we try to declare God's love. We shouldn't be trying to push people around as we're trying to make room at the table. As we look to the business world, as to the working world, they're using this term called soft skills, something different but equally valuable to being a part of a work culture. Soft skills are things like listening, critical thinking, creativity, empathy, research, and patience. I can uh, lead you to an article by Allison Doyle another time that she details much better than I have. But indeed, these are things that are part of being a part of a family, whether we notice them or not. They're certainly a part of being a part of the family of God, things that are valuable, but things that are hard to earn a degree toward, things that aren't always calculated as an increase in your salary, but things that are certainly valuable to the work of God in the world. Amen. 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 Now, ladies, you're good at some of these soft skills that us gentlemen sort of with. <laughs> I know I'm talking quick today, but my mind was even quicker. And sometimes my wife's saying something very valuable that will happen in just a few minutes. My mind's thinking about something else. <laughs> but indeed, we are told to pause, to listen, to fully be present, as we've heard today, be present in the moment, to enjoy it and to get all the value out of life that God offers us. Yeah. And so mighty men, we need mighty women around us to remind us of the things that are truly important, the things that are soft, that will make us mighty. Indeed, we think of how muscles work and are put together and how they're supported by the things you can't see as often, the bone, something within, something that keeps strength for the whole body to keep moving, not just by the muscles that can grow that we can see, but by the strong bones that are stable within. Indeed, God calls us to do the inner work so that we can be ready on the outside to help. But again, this isn't like going to the gym. It's not like doing upgrades on your car to make it faster or run smoother. Indeed, we're called to become more like Jesus within, and it's something that people can't always quickly see. But indeed, even though we don't always see the quick results, even though it takes time and can cause inner pain that nobody else knows what's going on, mm -hmm. we know that the yoke of Jesus is lighter. And we know that as we give up our chains, let him take care of them. Yes. We get lighter that way too. Yeah. Indeed, Jesus has a better way for us. Mm -hmm. 
Indeed, if we are seeing Jesus as the ultimate man, he is certainly the ultimate man of God for us to follow. Recently, I, I, in the last few months, I've been thinking about the cross and all that it means for us. But again, I, I'm cool. I like images. I like the, the visuals we can get sometimes. And so I think of how the cross is like a sword thrust in the ground. Indeed, a sword is valuable, would be valuable for defending oneself, but meant at certain points to get a jab on your enemy. But Jesus didn't go to the cross to cause harm to his enemies. He meant to heal them, just like everybody else. Amen. It's Amen. funny. But it was the religious folk that sent Jesus to die. It is the uh, criminal justice system of that time who set aside and let it all happen, even though Jesus was innocent and undeserving. And that's what we can face in this life, too. But nonetheless, Jesus meant no ill for everyone. He offered forgiveness for people on the cross before he died. But again, rather than his sword out to defend himself, it was thrust into the, the ground so that he might release himself, be protected by God, and to entrust himself to God no matter what would come. So indeed, we look to Jesus and remember that his strength is what we look for to be mighty within Amen. ourselves. Amen. Amen. Now, it's frustrating sometimes when people are giving us trouble, when people do things that we can't control that do affect our lives. And it's tough when someone harms us that we want to fight back. But we can't change other people, can we? No. We can only let God change us. Amen. Right. And so it's valuable, I think, sometimes to think of the late great philosopher Michael Jackson and what he's told us. I'm starting with the man in the mirror. Let's keep going. I'm asking him to change his ways. No message could be any clearer. If you want to make the world a better place, take a look at yourself. And make the change. I heard the ch word change later, earlier, so I feel welcome to continue. <laughs> it's a good word. Amen. Indeed, we are called to change, to grow in virtues, even though it can be difficult. Indeed, we pursue, pursue virtues and let God work on us. There's more room in us available to serve others. Oh, if God has done his work in us, we certainly can be better at teaching others about what God means for us to do with his love, grace, and peace. So Paul called Timothy away from vices, to flee vices. He called him then to pursue virtues. And last, Paul called Timothy to fight on for the victory. We find this again in verse 12. Fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of eternal life to which you were called when you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Now, Paul isn't calling us to uh, cause a ruckus, is he? He's asking us to fight on. He's using a athletic a metaphor, as he used in other times. I press on toward the goal. I move forward. Indeed, Paul is not calling us to cause trouble. He is causing us to move forward in the strength of God, going wherever God goes. Indeed, we think of enemies who might raise harm against us with violence. But the ways of God are peaceful. And that's the way God intends to redeem the world. Indeed, Paul is calling us to have endurance, to press on within ourselves. Our fight is not just with uh, flesh and blood, but with powers and principalities that we can't even see. People that are being manipulated and don't even know it. And we fight not just with outside, but within as well. The biggest builder of endurance is what we do inside. Again, those virtues. We fight against our selfishness. We fight against our despair when we see tough things. We fight against the urge, perhaps daily, to retaliate, to fight yeah. Physically back. Yes. 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 Jesus says no. I'm calling a different way. <laughs> Jesus says no. Go where I go. Because that's Amen. the path that leads to life. Right. Right. We cannot forget the victory of Jesus. Because it is the way that God indeed wants to redeem all things. Yes. All the created order was meant to be restored to God. And though we were sinners and not worthy of it. Jesus died to make the pathway clear for us. Amen. Amen. Let's circle back one more time. Mm -hmm. How did Jesus fight for the victory? 
He entrusted himself to God, and he did what God called him to do. He showed love and grace even to those who nailed him to the cross. Amen. That not just the good folk of that day, not just the lowly, but all people whose eyes would be opened and see the work of God unfolding. Indeed, God intends for all people to taste and see that the Lord is good. Yes, Lord. So we depend on the work of Jesus because Jesus reveals how to make that all happen. Amen. Amen. So what's Amen. Paul saying when he calls out the confession that we've made to Timothy? What's he looking at exactly? We find the Gospels that Jesus' trial is where Paul's kind of pointing back to you. When Jesus uh, is asked by Pilate, are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus says, it is as you say. Jesus is declaring inadvertently that he is Lord, and that is certainly why we praise him this morning Man. and every day. Indeed, with our very lives, the purpose of fighting off for the victory is for the sole purpose of living like Jesus is Lord. And the things we profess with our mouth are worked out in our hands, in our bodies, in every part of us. We might be instruments of God's work in the world. Yes, Amen. Lord. Amen. Now, again, we go through tough times. But it's helpful for me as we look to uh, The Lion King, a, a solid movie for generations, I think. <laughs> <laughs> the king at the time speaks to the young Simba. Being brave doesn't mean you go looking for trouble. Amen. Indeed, we are strong, we are mighty, we are bold. We don't need to walk on the path of trouble. That's right. But if trouble does find us, God promises to protect us, to send help as well. Indeed, even when we face the harshest of circumstances, even death in this life, God promises to have the final word, to bring resurrection, to bring new life. Yes, yes. That God will take care of all rights or all wrongs, make things right for everyone. Yes. Indeed, people try to tie us down, to harm us, to hurt us. But God promises to heal us, to set us free, to keep us going. We trust him to do that, and that's why we keep fighting on with struggles around us in our world, but also within ourselves. We might be strengthened within and strengthened in our hands to help others. Amen. 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 Now, again, we think it'd be nice to, to make certain people, to use authority, to use our, our wisdom, our age, our stature, to bump people around, to make things happen more quickly, to make sure they're fighting for victory. But as we find from the Christian author Emma Danzi, a man cannot force anyone to be a person of God, but he can model it and show others Amen. to live for Christ. Amen. Amen. Indeed, Paul, I imagine, was an unimpressive person. We see Paul describe himself in other places as someone that people would not have taken a second look at. What Paul had as a mighty man of God was a calling to follow God, to show his love to all people. So Paul went forth, and he picked up people like Timothy along the way to strengthen them, to help them. Indeed, we can't make decisions for people. We can't force people into faith. But we can show them how to love and hope that one day yes. they'll come along. Yes. That's right. That's right. Amen. So we give thanks for Paul. We give thanks for Timothy. We give thanks to all the people throughout the ages who have showed what mighty people of God look like. Amen. For indeed, we stand on their shoulders, stepping forward toward what God has called us all to be about. Amen. Indeed, we flee from vices. We pursue the virtues of godly character, and we fight on for the victory. For though the, the battle is not completed, we know that God will bring resolution and bring a win for us. We trust in him. Amen. So we fight on this day for the good work of Jesus and the ways that he loves us, and the way that he wants his love and peace and simple, humble, but mighty ways yes. to change the world. Amen. Let us pray. Amen. Dear God, we thank you for this day, for the sunshine, for all of the small things along the way that have given us our faith. And we thank you for your word. And whenever we need a signpost of where we should go, you show us what it means to be a mighty person, a mighty man of God in this world. God, give us strength for today and hope for tomorrow to be your people and to declare your word well. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.